welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. Uh, David, in this week's episode, what are we going to be talking about? It's the Marantz CD60 CD player. Very good. Do you remember the CD players, Mike? I, I, uh, yes. I know you've got a phone welded to your hand with Waroon well, and, yes, uh, yes, true, you know, true, sort true. of um, Cobuzz, yeah. high res, or everything these days. But I, there, are, there are some people still use these little silver discs. I've, I've taken your advice. I probably, we probably shouldn't say this live, but I've taken your advice, and I've been buying CDs on eBay again because I think they're going to make a comeback like vinyl has. Well, they've made a comeback uh, in, in my house. That's for sure. They certainly so, have, isn't that the truth? Yeah. Yes. But then so has Dat. And mini disc. <laughs> so, you know, don't tell them. Don't like. get me started. <laughs> so, <laughs> so well, can we edit that bit out later? <laughs> so. Definitely not. Um, so, uh, so it's really nice to see Morant still being a major player in the CD market because I've got very fond memories of some of the early Morant's players: the CD sixty three, yep. the CD sixty three KI. Yeah. Um, you know, they they were really good, and certainly when I was in retail, then they were extremely popular. Yeah. And, and for a, Pretty good reason because the the Philips equivalents the the oh gosh um, six three four I think I had right uh, which is the all single dance one was, oh, it was it was pretty um oh what can I say agricultural yeah um, yeah it was very bright it was very sharp it didn't really have much resolution and it wasn't very nice to listen to yeah it was um, was dead cheap though wasn't it it was dead cheap and it was, yeah. it was a, it, it, that was one of the first Bitstream chips yeah um, and Bitstream was hailed as the future and it just really didn't didn't work and yeah. in fact it was better than this than the 16-bit players before that they were even worse yeah um, but they're all around about the same time as the cd 63 and the cd 63 came out and um it, it was the best budget player yeah you know you need to spend quite a bit more um, on that so yeah so i'm really pleased that Morantz are still in the game here and yeah. still producing some stuff yeah so the the, fi the cd 52 i think was the it's one 52, that's, yes. that started it wasn't yes. it and yeah. they did a yeah and that was basically the first Morantz version of a Philips Bitstream player That's it. that was kind of wasn't utter crap yes. if we're allowed to use that phrase on, on the internet um, and um, and that was very popular and what hi-fi you know is on the front cover of what hi-fi every month almost it was wasn't it? Yeah, yeah and that was about 250 to 300 pounds probably in around 91 92 that kind of time and the cd60 is about yep. 750 yeah well the, the the cd63 that replaced it would have been mid 90s and that would have gone up to about three four nine so this is going to be equivalent exactly to that. which is exactly that so it's, yeah. it's a roughly the same price sure. as the cd60 is now sure. in, in uh sure pound sure. sterling yeah. yeah interesting interesting um and look you look at it and it's it looks great it does it's really nicely built i mean it, as it, well it is and i think crazily I, well built isn't it's it? really if you if you if, I, if you said to me that's a five grand CD player, I go yeah, it looks yeah. it looks terrific. Yeah. Um, but it's but it's look, it's 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 not it's a it's a budget CD player, and so by definition it's going to be compromised. So what we found was you know they've clearly spent quite a lot of money on the build. They've spent quite a lot of money on making it look super stylish. Yeah, it's got a nice remote control. Yeah, uh, all of those things, but it doesn't quite cut the mustard sonically, does it? No, I mean it's it's sort of it, it's kind of near, but not yes, quite there. Not quite. No. Um, no. Yeah, I mean, I think we were. I think actually, I think the problem is, is that it looks so good. You think it's like at least a fifteen hundred pound or maybe two grand CD player. Yes. You put it on, it doesn't sound like a fifteen hundred grand or no. two grand CD player. No. It sounds much more kind of in the sort of seven fifty kind of price range. It does. Um, it does. And and um, so it's kind of. Uh, you know, um, it, it's kind of lets itself down just mm -hmm. by showing mm -hmm. its kind of mo mortality, as it were. And so. I think we found out where it lets itself down as well. And I think it's, I think it's squarely in the DAC. Yeah. Um, because you know, obviously, you know, you can you can use the transport out, which we did. Yeah. And we plugged it into a cord DAC. We plugged it into, um, well, we, we we plugged it into your TT two, which is obviously Hugo going, TT two, Hugo yeah. TT two, which is yeah. always going to improve things. But also with something like the cord Qtest or even the Mojo yeah. is going to be a, a massive sonic improvement. Yeah. That, which which actually is quite a nice thing because as you said earlier, and I think this is a really great point, um, a lot of people just use CD players as transport these days and it does have a fantastic transport. Yeah. So if you wanted a great looking machine with a great transport yeah. and you wanted to say plug it into a digital amplifier, like the exposure, yeah. with the exposure with the, with the DAC in it, for yeah. example, 
actually that could be a really really lovely system yeah, or if yeah. you already had a cord mojo again you've got a lovely transport yeah now i've just done this actually recently and it's funny isn't it because um because uh, i've got the sony transport now the cd you want x2 cdp x a2 es or is it x a20 um, so I'll tell you later. Yes, okay. Yeah. Um, and actually, that's a really solid transport. I think it's the XA20. XA20 yeah. A really, really yeah. solid transport. Yeah. Um, and I've got that plugged into a Cord Qtis at the moment. It sounds fantastic. Yeah. Because that's got a lovely transport. Yeah. And, you know, what's not to like? Yeah. So I think it's very similar along along those lines as mm. well. So, look, you, all these manufacturers have a problem. And the problem is, if you make a CD player at 750 quid, say, yeah. and you make another one at, say, 1,200 pounds, yeah. then... There's got to be a sonic difference between the two. Yes, especially when they're almost identical in terms of looks and feel and all the rest exactly, of it. And build. Exactly, 100%. Yeah. So you've got to compromise it somewhere. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd never buy the more expensive one. Yeah. Um, so I can really see that happening here. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because, uh, interestingly enough, there's a, there's, a, there's a motoring analogy as well here. Yeah. So there's always a motoring analogy in, in high, Michael there, Dave's high-fi. There right? certainly is, yeah. yeah. Um, so what it is, it's, it's a 1999 motoring analogy so in 1999 yeah. uh, Golf GTI yeah. um, was um, a really nice car really cool okay and it was like the hot would that be today. like the fourth gen fifth gen somewhere around yeah, that fourth, yeah. Fourth, yeah. Fourth, yeah, fourth and gen. then obviously yeah. um, all part of Volkswagen group so in, in 99 Volkswagen um, big upon Audi launched the S3 yeah Okay, so they Volkswagen immediately have this the same dilemma that Marantz have got. Yeah, you know you can't have an S three which is more expensive and slower than a Golf. Yeah, um, or you know have a Golf that's almost the same speed. Yeah. So what they did, they've had identical engines. Yeah. But they tweaked the Golf down. Yeah. So the Golf was one hundred and fifty horsepower, and the and the um, S three was two two five. Yeah. So the S three was much quicker, and they made yeah. the S three four wheel drive, and yeah. you know much more desirable car. But it's the same chassis. Yes, and virtually um, in terms of cost, in terms of the engine, virtually identical. Same engine. Yeah. So same 1.8 exactly. engine. Yeah, just so, just but, a map on the on exactly. the ECU. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you know you could have bought the, the Golf and tweaked it, which is kind of almost what we're saying here, isn't yeah. it? You know, you buy the Marantz, the CD60, and you tweak it by putting an external DAC on. Yeah. And then you actually have something which is really quite special. But but Marantz are in that situation, which an awful lot of hi-fi manufacturers are in, where they make entry level, mid level, high end. Yeah. You know, you've got to be able to differentiate between between yeah. the three of them, yeah. even though there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. So actually, what I think you're getting with this CD60 is a really a, a top-notch transport. Yeah, we've no we've found where the compromise is. Yeah. Take that out of the equation. Yeah, and I think you actually get something really smart. Yeah. it'd be like buying the Golf and remapping it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, okay, you don't get the four-wheel drive yeah. in the S3, but you've still got a pretty cool car. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I, I, I see that a lot in hi-fi. Yeah, an awful lot in hi-fi, particularly with this. I think the I mean. It's hard to explain just how nice the CD60 feels um, relative to the CD63 of of your, you know, yes. in the early mid nineties, yes. which was kind of plastic, fantastic, uh, with a pressed steel chassis that that you would bend if you almost looked at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even the the fifty two that came before, it, I think, was was mostly plastic. Yes. Um, you know, everywhere, not just um, uh, on on the face here or whatever. Um, but this one is is a really nice thing, isn't it? And Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. so you, you you've kind of had that big outlay on, on that sort of lovely metal case and the styling. I think of the new Marantz uh, separates is 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 great. It it's is really lovely. Modern. They've, yeah. they've yeah. moved along very nicely from their kind of um, period where they were sort of stuck in the two thousands with sort of sort of slightly silvery or champagne gold bland yeah, faces yeah, and yeah. little bits of blue lights and stuff yes um, and they've they've really done it very nicely uh, but as you say when you've chucked all the money at that then you know you then have to rob Peter to pay Paul as it were um, and the result is that it's it's it sounds decent I would say um, two things that struck me firstly it's got a really wide sound stage okay um, yeah. it's really expensive and and that was genuinely impressive also dynamically it's very good as well yes that's very true um, I remember yeah. we were playing yeah. Crime of the Century by we Super Tramp yeah. and that's not an easy song to play no, I no to say. yeah so. and you know so basically school and bloody well right the, the, the first two tracks um, and not that we ever we don't play that kind of rock music on this channel normally <laughs> but <laughs> so but it was it was very impressive. The um, the dynamics were great. The separation was great. The sound staging, 
Um, it seemed to be very quiet as well. There's not kind of mushy kind of noise. No, very true. Um, but it was a little bit tonally first. We found it a little bit nasal, didn't we? Yes. Um, yeah. And um, Roger Hodgs- Hodgson's voice is it's kind of whiny, isn't it's it? He's got a strange voice. He's kind of like that hair. And it's sort of sometimes it's like Geddy Lee on a bad day, isn't it? Yes. Sometimes. Yes, quite. Um, so um, it's not the easiest thing to to reproduce. No. Uh, especially when you're playing it through my my um, reference system, you're with, super revealing. Yeah, NS one thousands, which uh, tell yeah. you everything you don't want to know about stuff. Quite. Um, and uh, you know the wretched, guilty truth about about the recording and everything. Yes. So yeah, I mean, the, the Crime of the Century is a little bit bright by by modern standards, slightly light light bass. Yes. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and it was I think it was like 1973 recording, wasn't it? Um, probably done at Abbey Road or something similar to that with a sort of 16 track analogue um, and it doesn't have massive amounts of bass and you know uh, that kind of thing so it's a bit sort of dry and in a kind of a British rock recording from that era yeah, type thing yeah without a doubt so without a doubt. the, the Morants didn't you know, it kind of told us all of that but it just didn't seem to suit the recording particularly no no it um, didn't and we've been, well, we've our listening wasn't obviously limited. To yeah. We found sort of some common denominators throughout all of the, you know, the the, the music which we checked yeah. at it, and it just it just was you know it was it was okay. But as soon as we swapped yeah. the deck out, it actually performed beautifully. It re- yes, um, it was a and, it, and it worked really well. So substantial so upgrade. That was yeah. the weak link, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. Um, but hey, look, seven hundred fifty quid. Yeah. So what you expect? You can't expect it, them to put a yeah. you know thousand pound deck in it because yeah. clearly they don't have the budget. So, no, absolutely. You know, it is, it is yeah. what it is. And um, yeah, and also um, I, I really like the uh, front panel USB input as well. Oh yes, so, yeah, uh, absolutely. You can play, uh, you know, flack and high res and all that kind of stuff up to twenty four ninety uh, one nine two, and DSD up to five point six megahertz. So basically, you could add, you can add a hard drive full yes. of uh, you know your high res tracks and play it out through that which is great it's a great feature it is uh, you know is. why why not um, yeah, absolutely so that was that was um, yeah you know an- another nice thing about it I think I agree it was um, a nice touch yeah, was, uh, yeah. they've clearly thought of that thought it out in that time without a doubt um, but you know it's like a, uh, I really wanted it to be better yeah I, I, I feel bad saying that but I just it looks so good and I, I've got a fond memory of Morant's sort of that price CD players. I, I want it to be a bit more exceptional. Well, I think um, I think the CD sixty three Ki signature, and I've still got one of those knocking around. Have you? I have. We yeah. still review of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that sounds better than this. It sounds more musical. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Okay. Okay. So it sounds more musical, yeah. and and um, it it it's kind of more feisty sounding, whereas the CD sixty is smoother and more kind of professional. You know. Um, so is, is this the one that Ken made for you? Uh, well, I've got one of those as well. Yeah, the uh, the CD sixty three KIDP. And, yes, the um, DP stands for. Uh, I can't think, of who, but um, but it, it's um, yeah. We'll be featuring that at a later date. And the, how many of those are in the world? Uh, uh, two, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. But the uh, yes, that will that will be uh, that will all be revealed later, viewers. But. Um, there's a long story, which I, I we don't have time for in this particular review. Um, no, no, all all the same. The the, the CD, I think the CD sixty, the modern one, um, sounds more professional, more sophisticated, more suave, you know. But it doesn't have the kind of earthy musicality of the of those kind no, of early nineties no. bitstream uh, players. Um, yes, but, no, uh, I never thought we'd be calling them musical, but you know. I get exactly yeah, what you're saying. But they were they were appallingly badly made and, and just cheap tapped basically. Isn't it funny how yeah. I see so that sixty three K I was actually a really nice player. It was, and, yeah. And at the same yeah. time you had things like the there were a couple of Sony ES players. I think they did the thirty three and the fifty five, yeah. yeah. which were built like tanks. Yeah. Um, but actually sounded worse. They did sound yeah. worse. They were more expensive. Yeah. They did sound worse. It was only the seventy seven that sounded any good. Yeah. And that was the best I'd heard yeah. at, at the time. That was a great machine. Phenomenal. Yeah. But Phenomenal. The, the interesting thing is the all of the the cheaper song is like as you say, the thirty X C D P X thirty three ES and the X fifty five ES. 
had like masses of buttons and yeah, had yes. a really solid build didn't yeah. they yeah um, but, nice transport yeah so again yeah. I think they're probably a little bit like this this exactly um, yeah. this this, this Morant so yeah. I think if you actually got one of those and put yeah. them into a DAC yeah um, you know a decent DAC they pro they've probably got really solid transports yeah. you know so again maybe that's a maybe that's a Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff top tip there go and yeah. buy a nice cheap Sony ES play <laughs> from the 90s and yeah. put a DAC on it oh hang on I've just done that so <laughs> Yes, but in the case of the 33 and 55, don't buy those because you can't get the lasers anymore. So uh, That's true, actually. Uh, yes, that is uh, true. And they do wear. Yeah. So and that's 77 you can. Yes. Uh, yeah. But um, the, um, the, the, the CD60 Marantz um, has, obviously, it's a brand new player. You can get it and it'll, it's got a warranty and all the rest of it. And, and the, the issue of CD players dying and CD transports dying is a real one now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. a lot of people are getting into classic CD players you know, and then suddenly find that they can't use them, you know, when they uh, when they start skipping tracks or whatever, misreading discs. Yeah, so. that's a shame, isn't it? I've got a couple of couple of Sony's in my shed which yeah. don't particularly like playing very much anymore. Yeah. When they do, they're quite sweet, but you know, there yeah. we go. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. We digress. Yeah. Um, give me a, a Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi riff for the Warrant CD60. Um, yeah, I'd say seven. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I'm. I don't want to give it any less than that mm. because I think it's got some great points. Beautifully made, looks great, great transport. So it's definitely worth a seven for that. Without the it's doubt. a very solid seven. And if you're again, if as you say, if you're thinking about using it with another DAC or something, or if you're looking for a, a really nice modern transport, you know, because so many people have got DAC inputs and so on on their amps or whatever, or nice DACs uh, that they use anyway. Already, yeah. Uh, then it's a, it's a very cheap way of getting a really kind of classy user interface with your with your silver discs yeah and i hope that morants so. don't feel we're putting them down because we understand where they are in the um you know the hierarchy of things they've got better players which are more expensive yeah you know this this yep. this has a this is built to a price point yeah um, and it does it really well and it almost so. it almost kind of um it almost hurts itself by looking and feeling so nice yes. that you expect it to sound like a yeah. two and a half grand machine exactly. or something exactly so, so yeah I'd, I'd say you know with with the caveats that we've we've given um you know a solid recommendation yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. so there we are you heard it here first so thanks so much again for watching this episode of mike and dave's hi-fi riff uh, we'll be back at the next one and we hope to see you there thanks very much bye bye, bye.